All right, this is Chris Henderson, Hollywood Code 85. This is Dominique Barnes, a.k.a. Freshy Snipes. What's going on, folks? Yeah, man, so you already know what was the big thing last week. Not naming the Mayweather fight, not naming the NFL draft. We had the Avengers movie, Age of Ultron. As you see, he's already decked out in his gear. Man, we're going to give y'all a quick review of what we thought about it, man. Uh, I'm going to let Mook take over because Mook is a really big comic book guy. So he's really big into it. So he's going to tell you a little bit more about it. Go ahead. I had, first of all, I personally thought it was better than the first one. In my opinion, I like the fact that it was more character driven. You know, like people like Hawkeye got more time to shine in this one than he did in the last one because it was mind control the whole movie. And, you know, they put a lot of more emphasis on, you know, Black Widow and the Hulk, which got even more shine. I like the way that they controlled the whole Bruce Banner thing. You know, he only become the Hulk when they need him to. But the only thing that kind of threw me off a little bit was the fact, that, you know, at the end of the first one, he was like, I can kind of control it. He was like, I'm always angry. And he just instantly turns to the Hulk. But in this one, they got to sing him a lullaby and stuff like that to get him to calm down. So I'll throw it to you. Yeah, I, I will say what I liked was the Hawkeye thing, that how they brought him in with his family and everything. Because yeah. you, you really didn't see him. And he was like, he was in the dark of top somewhere all the time. Yeah, and um, the one thing I have a question about is the whole thing with the Scarlet Witch okay. and Quicksilver. Is that his name? Uh, yeah, Quicksilver. Yeah, yeah so um, if I'm not mistaken, they were in X-Men, right? The last X-Men. They but, are originally X-Men characters. They okay. are Magneto's children. Okay, so the Quicksilver that wasn't there was supposed to be allegedly... So the whole X-Men thing was wrong then because... Remember how they showed Quicksilver with the little girl? Yeah. And the TV, she was supposed to be her, but she was smaller. So they're technically twins, Yeah, right? they're technically twins, yeah. Okay, so I like I like how they brought in Quicksilver in the movie. Um, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, obviously. I guess we might as well tell because we're doing a review. Yeah, so... Uh, I hate the way it ended that way. I don't know if he died or not, right? They didn't know. really show no funeral or nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I like the movie. I, like I said, I'm not a big comic book guy, but I will say the most important thing I did like about it was some of the scenes, the action scenes. I like the storyline. It really brought them together as a team. It wasn't yeah. just like everybody had to outshine somebody. I think the really the spontaneous part was at the party in the beginning of the movie yeah. when they had the Thor hammer and all that stuff. Nobody could pick it up. Then he had the hiccup when um, Captain America picked it up. And, yeah, the face he made. Yeah. Like, oh. But in the comics, actually, Captain America does actually wield it and use it. Wow. So that was kind of a nod to that as well. You know, one thing I, I thought was very interesting about the movie, um, a lot of people weren't familiar with the vision. Um, I like how they integrated him in. Now, is Jarvis like dead or is he no longer? No, okay. Vision, they they did, they switched it up a little bit as far as the origin of both Ultron and Vision because originally Ant-Man is the one who created Ultron. But obviously they couldn't do that, you know, because he wasn't created yet. But Ultron creates Vision the same way he does in the movie, but... The difference between Ultron and, you know, Vision is the fact that Vision actually has a little bit more of a human element than Ultron does. Okay. So that's what that's what they put Jarvis in, you know, Vision. So that's why he kind of was more, you know, in tune. So Jarvis isn't dead. He's just inside of Vision. Yeah, I think one thing I did like about it. Now, one thing that I did also like about the movie was with Thor, how they made him more... Like spontaneous, like I say, gave him a different, more like a funny feel. To yeah, him. he, he was all just like God, like like they joked around the whole God thing, and they he played along with it very well. Um, you know, I don't think the honestly, if I had to give a ten star movie, if it was a rating for the ten stars, I mean, it may be nine point five nine. Yeah, I mean, like it ain't too much I can say that was wrong with me. I think the only thing I kind of got upset about was you know the whole thing with Falcon. <laughs> uh, which he didn't show up in the part when they were trying to say the people were in the city and stuff, had him evacuate and all that stuff to the ship or whatever it was. And but War Machine did though. Yeah, War Machine showed up, and I am very impressed with that. I like how they had War Machine. I like the little jokes they had. You know, to play hide and go see the key. What was it, the zucchini? Yeah, the, yeah. Y'all yeah, yeah, trying to play hide the zucchini? You know, right? It was a very humorous movie, and I like the fact that they made Ultron with a sense of humor. Yeah. Instead of just a, you know just a cold blooded robot. Because he kind of is like that, but he kind of, you know, since it's the Marvel Universe and he's based off Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, they gave him more of that personality. Which I liked it. I liked the fact that they did that. You know, like I said, they didn't overshadow any characters in this movie because, like, in the first ones, you never saw too much of Hawkeye. You yeah. always saw Iron Man. Like, it was too much Iron Man. Although the movie was great, I just thought that, you know, it was too much Robert Downey. Like, yeah. We, after a while, you don't want to see Iron Man, but I'm very impressed with the movie. Like I said, I can't wait. I guess it's just, Thanos, how you say his name? Thanos. Thanos. And he's going to be the new guy, I guess, at the end of the movie. That was. Yeah. And what's your thoughts about that? 
he's actually one of my favorite villains as far as comic book goes. So I'll be the one rooting for him instead of the heroes. And I like the way they did it, just short, you know, well, I guess I have to do it myself. Now, for people who's confused by that, basically what that means is in all the Marvel movies, he's pretty much the one behind the scenes trying to get everybody to collect the Infinity Stones. Okay. Because in the comics, the gun that he wears, all that, all, you know, the colors in the, in the knuckles, those are for the Infinity Stones, and he collect them. So now he's pissed because everybody keeps failing. So now he's just going to do everything himself. So I'm assuming he probably won't officially show up. You know, he's been in Guardians of the Galaxy, but you didn't really see him in action. So he probably won't really show up until Infinity War, which is 2018. Now, we will tell you this. There's a mid credit scene, but there is no post credit scene. So once you see the Thanos scene, you are free to leave. Yeah. You don't have to sit there. Yeah, I learned my lesson from like all these movies with these Marvels and DCs that you have to stay. And I like how they integrate them at the end. They do the little things so let you know there's going to be a, yeah, you know. Because yeah, I remember yeah. with the X-Men, the last one, the, um, what was it, that? was the X-Men, the last one? Apoc yeah, that's the Future Past. Yeah, I remember like, Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Yeah. like I stayed there and I remember just seeing the whole sand, the desert kind of looking. I'm excited, man. Like I said, I think it's going to be amazing. I think this movie's amazing. It's definitely going to be one of those movies I got to see again. Yeah. To catch on to some of the Easter eggs they call them in the gaming world that I didn't see. Oh, well, let, me, let me school you on a few. Okay, right. first of all, Andy. First of all, a lot of props go to Andy Serkis, who is the dude that plays Caesar. Okay. You know, in the Planet of the Apes movies, he was the one who got his arm chopped off by Ultron. Okay. Now he's actually going to be Ulysses Claw in the Black Panther movie. He's oh, actually wow. a Black Panther villain. As you know, they went to Wakanda, which is yes. where Black Panther is from. Okay. And Ulysses Cloud is one of Black Panther's main villains. So that's that's how it happened. He got his arm chopped off, and that's how he got the claw in his arm. Now, another Easter egg that a lot of people won't know, okay, remember when he implemented Jarvis into the, the Vision? Pizza, yeah, 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 okay. And he had the new AI called Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look, he had the other AI called um, Jasaka. I hope I said her name right. But... She is also created from Ultron to marry her. Oh, wow. But what happened was, you know, Ant-Man, Iron Man, and Captain America, they tried to prevent her from marrying Ultron, and they eventually did, and she became an Avenger. So those were, like, two, like, of the main Easter eggs that I did recognize and was get a round of applause for that. All right, well, before we get out of here, Luke, um, what's your rating that you can give this movie? Considering this is the Avengers, I give it four Captain America shields out of five. Wow. And I am looking forward to the DVD version, which will have an extra hour because they have to, you know, cut the movie back. So it'll be an extra hour on the DVD version. So oh, wow. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Well, this is Hollywood Code 85. Fresh the Snipes 21. We'll be back because we got something for y'all. We got to talk about this hyping of the Suicide Squad, the photos. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. We'll be out. Peace. <laughs> Thank you.